The Apple Watch SE is often a bit of an afterthought when it comes to new Apple Watch launches, but as you will see in this video, it's actually a great heart rate tracker and also a pretty good GPS tracker. So it might be the best bang for buck for you when you want to track your exercises. Maybe you're a runner or a cyclist looking for a good deal and the Apple Watch SE 2025 might be just that deal you're looking for. I just finished a bunch of exercises, including a very hot and tiring run to test the heart rate tracking performance of the Apple Watch SE 2025 and we're going to do an initial systematic and scientific test of the new Apple Watch SE 3 to help you decide if this is the device for you or if you want to get the Apple Watch Series 11 or want to spend even more money on an Apple Watch Ultra 3. Now of course the screen size and some of the features are limited on this new Apple Watch SE but it's also a lot cheaper than for instance an Apple Watch Series 11. You'll probably save close to $200 getting the SE instead of the Series 11 and that might actually be worth it for you. Yes, you will get a better screen, oxygen saturation measurements and a few other things if you get the 11 instead of the SE. And of course, the Apple Watch SE 2025 still has the older generation sensor, so we need to make sure that the heart rate tracking performance is good enough. So let's take a look and as always, let's start with indoor cycling, which should be one of the easier exercises for a device to track, but let's see if the Apple Watch SE 2025 is up to the task. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. And as always, the reason we start with indoor cycling is because that's an easy exercise for most devices to track, so we hope that they would perform well for this. And as you can see, the Apple Watch SE 3 is doing really well. So we have the reference device, which is the Polar H10 along the horizontal axis and the Apple Watch SE 3 along the vertical axis. And each dot is a single measurement. So if they would perfectly agree, all points should be on or close to the blue line. And they're basically just perfect. So I'm really happy that that older generation sensor is still doing really well. And I even have the feeling that with firmware updates, it's still being improved over time. So Apple is getting more performance out of the same sensor. And we have a correlation up here, which is this R value, which is a rounded value of 1.00. Now this correlation cannot be higher than one. So a rounded value of 1.00 is really good. Let's make sure though that there were no dropout moments. So let's take a look at the indoor cycling session itself. And here we have that spinning session with the reference in blue green and the Apple Watch SE 3 in red. And the lines basically overlap perfectly. So I did several intervals and all the changes in my heart it were correctly detected by the Apple Watch SE. And we don't see any dropout moments, so my heart was continuously detected. And what seems like a small dropout here is me actually starting the heart rate tracking a little bit later, and there was probably one automatic measurement before. So overall looking really good. And we can compare this performance to the competition. Now again, this is an initial test because I only did one indoor cycling session, but overall looking really good. And if we compare it to the competition, it actually has the best correlation out of any device that I've ever tested. Now, as many of you will understand, there will be a lot of uncertainty if you just do one indoor bike ride. So we cannot conclude that the Apple Watch SE 2025 is the best heart rate tracker out there. It just did super well for this one session that we tested it. We can actually zoom in a little bit. So these are just the devices with a correlation above 0.9 or higher. The devices are sorted from worst on the top left to best on the top right. And these are actually already some of the better performing devices. So I filtered out the worst ones. And out of all of these, the Apple Watch SE 2025 has the highest correlation ever. But it's super close to my testing of the previous SE, so the SE 2 in 2022. But we see basically all Apple Watches being very close. Also the Apple Watch Series 11, the Apple Watch Ultra 3. We cannot say that any of these are actually doing better than the others. They all have very similar, super high correlations. Apple watches are just some of the best heart rate trackers out there. And I don't know if this is because Apple creates such good hardware or such good firmware. Somehow they married the two together very well and they're performing very well. And it's interesting that both the older and newer sensor don't show a major difference. So somehow they get the same performance out of both. But let's now make things a little bit more difficult and let's take a look at the results for running outside. 
I went for a one hour-ish 10K run, a little under one hour actually. So let's take a look at those results. Now, before getting to the running results, running this channel next to my full-time job as a scientist is not easy or cheap. And if you wanna support, there's multiple ways of doing that. I actually bought all Apple watches with my own money. So I spent about 2000 euros just in this week on new watches. The most direct way of supporting is by becoming a YouTube member, which is basically Patreon on YouTube, and it gives you early access to some of my videos, but it's just a nice way to support, but only do it if you can really afford it. Another way of supporting is by using one of my affiliate links in the description below. For instance, my Amazon affiliate link, if you click that first before making any purchase, I get a really small kickback, but it really helps supporting the channel. Some people have even bookmarked it by pressing Control or Command D, I think, so if you click that then before any Amazon purchase, even for something like toilet paper, that really helps support the channel. And of course, liking and subscribing also helps. But let's get back to the running results. And here we have the running results, which also look very good. Now I didn't do any intervals here. This was my continuous run today. I had a long run according to the runner app. And that long run actually went quite well. I went reasonably fast for me. I'm still somewhat new to running, but it also meant I didn't really have intervals planned today, which is sometimes where some watches struggle. So that test will have to wait, but this initial test at least looks very good. But again, let's confirm there are no dropout moments. Oh, and before I forget, the correlation is again 1.00, so very good. So here we have that run. It took me a little under an hour to finish it. So you can see my heart rate steadily increase. Then it was more or less stable, but there were some moments where I ran a bit slower, some moments where I ran a bit faster. And all those changes were picked up on by the Apple Watch SE 3. So really good results. I have nothing to complain about, honestly. It was always within, let's say, two BPM of the reference. And I would say there's also some uncertainty in the reference, so one or two BPM is basically perfect. So a really good result. And that again means that if we compare to the competition, the Apple Watch SE 2025 is among some of the best performers. It's actually doing about as well as some of the other new Apple Watches. But let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels. I know it's still quite crowded. I have to improve this plot. But the Apple Watch SE 2025 right here is the third best device I've ever tested if we purely look at that correlation. Again, there's a lot of uncertainty there. So I would say it does about as well as the Apple Watch Series 11, the Apple Watch Series 9, the Apple Watch Ultra 3, the Apple Watch Ultra 2. All of these have about the same performance. So no matter which Apple Watch you get, I think after Series 6, you're probably getting that amazing performance. But even that older sensor is doing quite well in the Apple Watch SE. So maybe even older generation Apple Watches are still performing really well. Though I think they might not get the latest firmware updates at the moment. Overall, also based on this initial running test, I have nothing to complain about in terms of heart rate tracking. But we can actually also take a look at the GPS tracking performance during my run. So let's do that. And here we have the run that I did in the Belvedere Gardens. And as regular viewers will know, I always run in the same circle many times to see if the GPS tracks are consistent. Now the idea here is that if GPS tracking is not very good, it's very likely you'll see a lot of noise in the signal and the GPS tracks won't overlap very well. However, if the GPS tracking is good, the signal should overlap because I ran the exact same circle many times. And as you can see, at least on this side of the track, it looks quite good. The signals are quite consistent. Of course, there will be some deviation. I can also not run perfectly in the same location, but here it looks really good. Now, as we also saw for the Apple Watch Series 11 and the Apple Watch Ultra 3, there does appear to be some post-processing going on. So I don't think the raw GPS signal is shown, I think it takes consecutive measurements and somehow smooths them out a bit, which is probably why the corners are always a bit more rounded than they were in reality. So all these tracks right here are a bit smoothed out. They do look roughly like I would expect them to look like. So when I go around the corner, I go wide a bit and then I tuck back in. There is a bit more deviation right here, maybe more than what we saw for the Apple Watch Ultra 3, which has dual band GPS. And we can actually also see that on this side of the track, there's a lot of deviation. So there's a large wall right here, and this interferes with some GPS signals. So this is a good test. And we see that the Apple Watch SE 2025 or SE 3, however you wanna call it, definitely has a lot more deviation than what we saw for the Apple Watch Ultra 3. So this is probably where that dual band GPS really helps. 
Then also back here, there's still some deviation. And then later on, as I get further away from that large wall, then the GPS signal gets a bit better again. But again, there's some smoothing around the corners. It doesn't look bad at all, but you do need to be aware that there will probably be some post-processing and the tracks will look a little bit cleaner than the raw signal. Now, in some ways, this is good. Like for some trackers, this really results in a noisy signal if they don't clean it up. However, Garmin, for instance, generally has really good GPS tracking, even with the raw data, so they prefer to show that. So then you won't have issues like this, where you have smooth corners. Still though, I do expect that with an Apple Watch SE, you'll mostly get a good pace measurement, a good speed measurement, and also a roughly accurate total distance traveled measurement. If you want the absolute best, I would recommend either a Garmin device or stepping up to an Ultra 3. There will still be some post-processing there though. Next, let's take a look at weightlifting, which is generally very hard for smartwatches to track your heart rate because during weightlifting, there's a lot of tension on your wrist, which for many devices makes it hard to still track those changes in blood flow, which are then translated to heart rate measurements. But let's see how the Apple Watch SE 3 performed. By the way, I actually ran a 10K in the sun today, according to the Runner app, which makes my running plans. If you also want to try out the Runner app, it's my favorite app for both running plans and for life guidance during your runs. And you can get a free two week trial by clicking up here. And the results for weightlifting are still pretty good, though we do see a little bit more deviation. In the lower heart rate range, it's almost perfect. But then as my heart rate gets higher, there's a little bit more deviation. Still pretty decent, but not quite as perfect. And the correlation is also a tiny bit lower now at 0.98. Honestly, this is still pretty good, but not quite as good as we saw for running and indoor cycling. But let's take a look at the session itself to see if there were any dropouts. And this looks pretty good, honestly. So today I did biceps and back, so a lot of pull-ups and also some bicep curls. And during the biceps curls in the beginning, it actually didn't have major issues. It might have had a small dropout in the second set, but otherwise it looked really good. Then the shoulder raises look pretty good and even the pull-ups aren't bad. It didn't fully detect the peaks in my heart rate. But compared to what we've seen from many devices, this is actually very good. Only the new AirPods Pro 3 did better than this, I think. And I expect that the performance for the Apple Watch Ultra 3 and Series 11 will be about the same. They actually had a harder job because then I was doing chest and triceps which somehow tends to be harder for many watches on me. And of course, we can again put this into the perspective of many other devices I've tested. And we have the Apple Watch SE 2025 amongst the top devices. So let's zoom in again. So if we're just looking at those devices with a correlation of 0.8 or higher, the Apple Watch SE 2025 is close to the Apple Watch SE 2022, which makes sense since they have the same sensor. And all other devices in this same region are all Apple Watches or sort of Apple products like the Apple AirPods Pro 3 and the PowerBeats Pro 2. Now, if you don't want to wear a chest up during weightlifting, the only devices I can really recommend at the moment are the PowerBeats Pro 2 and the AirPods Pro 3. Apple Watches are pretty decent, but there will be some moments likely with dropouts, but it's not that bad recently. It seems to have improved over time. And also the Amazfit Helio strap on the biceps didn't do that poorly. Overall, pretty solid performance by the Apple Watch SE 3. So just in pure heart rate tracking performance, the Apple Watch SE 2025 is doing about as well as the much more expensive Apple Watch Ultra 3. Now I do find the GPS tracking of the Ultra 3 with a dual band GPS to be a bit better, at least in my initial testing. But if heart rate tracking is your focus, you're not gonna see major differences between the Ultra 3 and the Apple Watch SE, even though this has the older sensor. Now, of course, the Ultra 3 has better battery life, on the other hand, it is heavier and will rock more on your wrist. And it's also quite large. So for some of you, it might be too large on your wrist. And an Apple Watch SE or Apple Watch 11 might actually look a lot better in daily life. Now, as I mentioned before, the GPS tracking performance of the new SE isn't quite as good as the Ultra 3, at least at what it seems like in my initial testing. I have to do more testing to be sure. But also from a specs perspective, the Apple Watch SE doesn't have that dual frequency GPS that the Apple Watch Ultra 3 does have. Now, would I get the Apple Watch SE myself? Well, also having worn the Apple Watch Series 11 and also the Apple Watch Ultra 3, I do like these two other watches more than the Apple Watch SE, 
But if it would be worth the money for me personally, well, that really depends on my financial situation. If I have enough disposable income, I would probably get the Series 11 or the Ultra 3 over the SE, but it really depends on how much you can and are willing to spend on something like a smartwatch. It integrates just as well with your iPhone and basic functionalities will be more or less the same. The main reason I actually like the Ultra 3 a lot more is because those added satellite functionalities, because it has better battery life and also just because I like the looks better. I think it looks a lot better on my wrist personally, but I already have relatively small wrists and if they're even smaller for you, then I definitely recommend sizing down a bit and getting yourself an Apple Watch Series 11 or Apple Watch SE. Now, of course, you're missing a few functionalities, but you have to decide what is important for you and how much you're willing to spend. Now, if you do end up getting an Apple Watch SE, an Apple Watch Series 11, an Apple Watch Ultra 3, another device like an 8 sleep pod to get better sleep, or you want a screenless device like a Whoop strap or a Polar Loop, you want to save some money and at the same time support the channel. There are different affiliate links in the description below, none of which cost you any extra and most of which give you the best discount possible. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Apple Watch SE 2025, I think you will like this video on the Apple Watch Series 11 or this video on my new favorite Apple Watch, the Apple Watch Ultra 3.